Hey everyone, today is the last day of our flower challenge. It's going to be day seven, the comb flower done in watercolor. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video because I have a little surprise for you. Hello everyone, we are, believe it or not, on our very last day, the cone flower. And I have a little butterfly in here that I may or may not try. I want to, again, I want to try to keep it short for you guys. So depending on how fast I can move, um, I may or may not do the butterfly. But I really like the butterfly, so I'll probably do the butterfly. <laughs> it's okay. It's the last day, right? We can make it a little bit longer. It's going to be 60 degrees out here today, so I am moving along, trying to do things fairly quickly because I want to enjoy the day and start my weekend early. How about you guys? So I found, again, on Unsplash.com, again, I'm using the same materials, my Legion cotton paper, my Cotman watercolor kit, uh, and my... Actually, I'm using a number eight round brush. I've been using a 10, but because I want to maybe do the butterfly, I went with the one just a little bit smaller. This one comes in that same kit that they sell, um, six different brushes. So you'll get to see that one today, but very similar, just a round brush. So let's see, once again, we have the shape of the flower. Again, it's, it's an egg. So let's go ahead and just very lightly sketch this in. Egg shape. Trying to get this one. This might be a little bit bigger here. And close enough. And then we have again uh, this little shape in here. You're not going to see the whole thing because the butterfly is on it. It is up near the top this time, so it's up here. It might be a little too big. You like that? I didn't trace that really well, did I? Let's take those layers off and see. Yeah, so it's wider here and actually a little bit more narrow here. Okay, and then we have our little butterfly wings. So the butterfly shape. See if we can do this one here. Oops, open layers, sorry. Still new to this. He is like almost a heart shape, right? Kind of a off-centered heart shape, but it starts the point here where the head is, slightly comes down. There's that one wing and the second wing and down. Pretty close. And then he's got his little take that off there so we can see the little body let's see he is more over here though so I'm gonna bring the flower top this way his little head wait a minute I'm gonna go around around it here and then his head is his little body here you don't really see much of the body so and this is probably more this way and this comes around and down over the front here. Okay, does that make sense? <laughs> I'm doing it and I'm talking. Remember, all of these I have not practiced ahead of time, so you guys are just seeing me in real time with my thought process. So I hope you enjoy that, or maybe you don't enjoy it. <laughs> I, I, I want to say that you will. I forgot to bring my little brush over, so I'm doing what I tell you not to do. Let's see, and then we have the petals. So this one is peeking out here, which you don't really see. This one's folded over, so that's all you see. This is kind of the shape. And then this one is coming out to here. And then that one, we're getting a little wider. This one has like two petals. And then we have this one coming out here. These ones are almost like squared off at the end. Look at that. And actually, I'm looking at it. This one's 
fairly narrow when it comes out. Not much to it here. Another one underneath. Again, these have a little space in between them. Did I miss that one? This one's kind of folded over. It's okay if I don't have this right, because I'm trying to do this fast. These ones actually a little bit longer. This one over here. And then let's go up here. Again, this one's curled around. It's more boxy. This one, oh, this one's a challenge. This one starts out like this, and then we have this like curve. Kind of comes up and over like that. All right, I think that's good enough. Let's erase that little circle in here as much as we can and see how this looks. My fluffy brush. So that, that looks about right. I'm going to bring that down to size again. This is another thing that's really great about using um, something like a, a an iPad or something because you can adjust this especially when you're when you're new to painting sometimes it's really hard to get the uh, size correct so if you have a certain size piece of paper you can blow this up to you know a pretty good size if you want to get something a little bit larger and you don't have to figure out you know how far from the top it is far from the sides so if I shrink that down to fit the same size as my paper, I don't have to think about that. So this has definitely got some edges to it. We can paint that in. And these go around. Here and around. Oops. And should we get these little lines in here? This has got a little piece here that shows another one here. I like these little squares. Some little white spots. Again, I'm not, I don't want to, we'll just kind of paint in around those. Another one here and another one. It's kind of rounded like that. This one has a piece here, a piece here, and one here. Okay, it's a little closer. It's got a larger one here. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not I'm trying to do this fast. It doesn't always work. And there's another light one here. I think these are a little bit bigger. Okay, and then we'll have our little white white spots in there. Okay, good enough. Good enough. I could probably spend more time drawing that, but I'm not gonna because we're in to ten minutes already just for the sketch. So, okay. Definitely is going to take longer for this one, isn't it? All right, I've got my water. Let's see if we can zoom in on this really quickly. Make sure we've got a good one. Look at that, I didn't realize I can, forgot I could zoom in on that for you. That's as far as I can go out though. I'm using my document camera today. I did that last night too. The lighting, it's, um, I'm actually painting about 10, 10 a.m. So it's a little um, a little better than last night's painting. I forgot to put the little stem in here. And this is kind of green in through here, so we'll leave that. All right, what do you want to start with? Shall we start with our petals first? And I'll erase more of that. You can still see it. <laughs> So I'm going to use the Allerzen Crimson 
those are in crimson hue and then I'm adding a little white to it I was testing that out in my palette just a little bit ago I can I cannot get that pink again we're still looking for that shade of pink which is really hard to capture so I'm gonna go in here just paint them really quickly with some of the light light pink This is how I can get that shape in there if I didn't get it quite right with my pencil line. Very light and airy. Put another one in there. And go in a little bit deeper again, just tapping in a few little spots just so it's not all the same color that one was my challenge one right there okay that's good and this is really dark in here let's see what color should we use first let's go with a lighter shade so i'm going to use a little bit of this yellow add yellow see how that is and i like to start a little bit lighter Ooh, it's got a little orange in there which actually works because that is pretty much what that color is in there and that's going to be darker underneath We don't really see here. This is a, pretty much a straight line across here because that is right where your butterfly is. And while that's wet, let's see. I think I'm going to go into, let's do a little bit of blue with that. Blue. Let's see if it's going to be too green. You know what, I think I'm gonna go in with the ochre and tap a little of that in there. And maybe a little bit of the fur number. Let's just see what we get with that, just a little bit. And then we can go in darker the second time. <laughs> Let's go into a little bit more detail. And I'm going to say this is more of a purple hue, so I'm going to add just a little bit of the ultramarine blue to what we have in here. Just a nice little soft, light purple. Test it out on here. Yep, it's pretty good. And we're going to start with this one, has a little line here. This one's got a little line here, and then it flips under. It might not be exactly right, but that's okay. These are more pinky. This one's more purple. This one's in, in shade. Again, I'm not thinking quite as much now. I'm just going for it. If it feels right, do it. And these definitely have a lot more lighter shade, so I might dry this and go with a little bit deeper pink. And then we're going to go with some blue. Get a little yellow ochre. And a little burn umber. Yep. I want that nice dark shade in here. And just tapping and dancing along, leaving some spaces in here for the yellow. This is nice and dark in here. And I'm going to switch when I get up here to a little bit of red. Because you can see that these are more orange with little red tips on them. 
Let's go with this one. This is our CAD red. Now I want to be careful because I want to use the very tip of that brush. And I'm just going to make some little dots up here. I don't want to push down too, too much. I'm going to go in this direction from here. A little bit in here. Okay, dry that. Up. Get a stem in here real quick, a little green and yellow. Again, add a little darker, a little blue in there. And I really want to go darker in there because that's what I see. I am I see black, but with watercolor, this is why I always tend to go with a lot of those details because I that's what I see, and I have a hard time not going in deeper in here because to me that looks black. And I think when you add those really dark areas, it really makes things pop. That's a lot of times where I'll go in there and I'll use um, the Sharpie because of that. And I even see a little bit of here, more of a dotting, dot, 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 dot. Again, just an illusion. Dry that. So I can definitely see that I have this shape as I'm looking at it now up here. Half time when I'm painting, I don't look enough at the actual image. But you can see how I have this more rounded here and it should be, oops, it should be coming in a little bit on, on this. So I'm a little off there, the cone, the cone shape. I should have brought that in a little bit more. The things you see when you actually stop and look at your painting is what it, again, what you think you see and what you actually see are a lot of times different things. And I can also see that in here, I have, um, you know, here's the shape. It's like this, or I'm like this, and straight across. And then it's dark in this area here. And I have it down here. So I really could bring that dark area up more if I wanted to. Let's, we want to paint, we want to make sure we get the uh, little butterfly in there, right? So I'm going to fill him in. It looks like he's got a little yellow ochre in here. And I'm just going to do it quickly and lightly. Those are actually little white spots, aren't they? Now add a little bit of this other brown to it. I think it's mostly in here. That is the sienna, by the way. Sienna in here, sienna in here. Okay. And we have to dry that because the rest of it's going to be black and white. <laughs> While that's drying, just a quick side note, I just want to share with you guys, this is what I do usually before I make a class. So I'll paint these things a couple of times and then that way I can really just uh, drill it down into what you need to know. So when I'm doing these type of paintings, you're really getting to see my whole creative process and how I work on some of the classes for you as I, you know, just really drill it down into some basic things that you'll need to know in order to paint your own. For black, again, I'm going to use the burnt umber and also the um, 
ultramarine. Let's see if I can do this here and around. I'll leave my little white spots. And have a little white spots here too. trying to keep my white spots in there but this brush again is a little larger so sometimes it's more difficult I don't have I have more white spots there too but, but I miss those and that's why it's always nice to use your masking fluid on things like this. And again, I'm doing this really fast. This is not time consuming painting with tons of details. I think we're getting, getting in some pretty good ones though. Move a little more down. Let's fill this one in. It looks like we just have black here and some of that white area, but that's okay. Looks like we have a few little white areas in here too. Let's square them in. That way we'll see them. Maybe. If I wanted to take a um, black Sharpie here, it would be a good time to do that as well. This is kind of over here more. Pops out a little bit here. All right, good enough. All right, I've said that a lot. <laughs> and then his little body, oh, this is all spotted in here too. I missed um, part of them. Look at his body's over here. Boop. And then he's got some little links in here. And he probably has some antennas, but you can't see them. So we'll give him some antennas. Okay, not exact, but not bad for at least, what is it, 15 minutes of painting and 10 minutes of sketching. And do I have a black Sharpie? I do. It's one that works. So I could have gone in here with my black Sharpie just to get some really small lines if I wanted to and shape up his little body a little bit more. And you can also do a little bit more detailing around here if you wanted to. Coneflowers have that little cone shape. Hence what I call the cone flower. Darken his little legs a little bit more. This is where I use this little black Sharpie just to pop things out a little bit more. You can see, again, I'm doing it really quickly. It just gives it a little bit more definition. Go 
couple dots in here. I'd like to get that shape in a little bit more coney. Let's see if we can adjust that a little bit. Just to come out a little bit more. I like that. Little spikes. Again, a little pen and ink detail. Look at that. And then I think I want to do one more wash on the pink flower because I just don't think it's bright enough. And I don't think I'm going to get it bright enough. using those colors that I have in there. Let's just try a couple washes and see if that, it's a little better, huh? Yeah, it's not quite the same color, but it's also darker in here. I'm seeing that too. Every time I look up at the picture, I can see more. Again, that's where I start to detail and it doesn't make it a quick warm up. And those petals still are not my favorite, so I'm going to use my pen and ink. Couple little scribblies here and there. And are we going to call this done? A little messy Marvin that I am. I probably would go back in and do some white gouache in here. My gouache was green from yesterday, so. Again, if you lose your whites, this is my little cheat, and you can dot in some more white in here. If you lose it in here and you want more, you can do it again. See, isn't that great? And I even see a little bit more white in here. If I wanted to pop a couple more highlights in on here, I can do that. I don't really see much white in here, but doing it anyway, because that's what I like. All right, I am finished. I probably went in more than I wanted to, but again, I wanted to get the little butterfly in there on this one too. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. This has been a really fun week. Again, flowers are uh, a challenge for me. I hope you guys learned something this week. I know that just practicing this stuff and doing it every day uh, it, of course, each flower is so much, so different, but you really get better at it. And I'm really liking the 15 minute warm ups. I usually do that during the week anyway, especially before I start painting. So if you just take 15 minutes and see how far you can get it and challenge yourself, that way you're not as, you know, you can see I wasn't really um, making sure that everything was perfect. I just was having fun creating and that is really part of a warm up. Um, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to probably list these up here on my Etsy shop soon. Uh, get them out there because again, even practices, you can still sell them. Um, you know, it's all part of the fun. Make sure you check out the channel. And if you missed anything um, or you want to join the challenge at a later date, feel free. You still can tag me on there. I'd love to see what you guys do. This could, you know, any time of the year, whenever you want to start that seven day challenge, go ahead and do it check out my website at www.kellychassiefineart.com. I'd love to have you join me in some of my full classes and uh, let me know if there's anything else you want to see. Maybe we can do another challenge later on this year and doing something different. I want to mention for those of you that are part of my membership or on my newsletter, uh, I'm going to go live tonight as a surprise. I thought we would could share some of our flowers that we've done or if you guys have questions in there, I can answer them for you. 
plus we'll be painting one more flower and it's going to be your choice so leave me a comment down below let me know what flower you'd like to do this evening so look for a zoom link coming up uh, in today's newsletter or email newsletter and i'm looking forward to seeing you guys later on tonight i think it's gonna be eight o'clock uh eastern standard time 8 p.m and for those of you that are on the live zoom call tonight i will be doing a giveaway all right we'll see you guys soon Bye bye